The ecological forestry around towns and settlements really should involve thinning of all forests to reduce uh, tree crowding and reduce the risk of crown fire. So this is thinning of our box, uh, native box forest um, at the Friars Forest Eco Village um, and laying all the debris on the, the contour. Uh, this condition of open forests is actually starts to approximate and accelerate the forests back to the condition that they were prior to European settlement. Uh, there's no evidence that leaving these dense forests to go through one successive bushfire after another, that they'll ever return to their indigenous uh, state. Uh, and we should be harvesting firewood from the thin trees to help cover the costs and further reduce fuel levels. Although it's not that large fuel, which is of course um, the threat in the fire. It's all the fine twig fuels of the suppressed trees as they last for years and years before they eventually die by natural competition and are thinned out uh, by nature. But that's a very slow, long process. Um, so this is what we do, uh, thinning the coppice regrowth, leaving the best trees uh, to grow on. And we need to build new livelihoods in ecological forestry uh, so that this is not just done at a taxpayer's uh, cost, uh, that these can be new green collar jobs in our rural areas. Uh, firewood is an important sustainable fuel in Europe, an important renewable energy. It will be here in the future, but it may or may not be sustainable depending on how far-sighted we are. If we develop the community-based use of wood at a smaller scale using appropriate technology, we can forestall the day when governments just hand over whole state forests to corporations who will build an extremely large power plant and shovel the whole lot in, because that's the future we are heading for if we don't develop the alternative. Wood gasification is one of the really important technologies for improving the resilience of our electricity grid, uh, creating jobs and efficiently uh, providing um, energy and resources from, from that type of material. So I think we need to accept that we live in a changing world where to survive and thrive we need to be creative and we need to be cooperative. And often in our peri-urban communities, there is a divide between uh, the greenies and the rednecks. There might be a lot of people muddling in the middle, but there is that, uh, we might say, extreme. And we also need to remember that we can't expect the authorities to save us. All the evidence is that without a resilient community, it doesn't matter how much capacity you have in a prof professional sense, uh, it can't deal with very large scale natural disasters, especially bushfires, by itself. And it will always, in the worst cases, break down to some degree, um, no matter how well uh, prepared we are. Um, we also need to uh, celebrate our stories of uh, resilience um, and abundance. We need to end the blame game. It must be the greenies fault. You know, we wouldn't have been burnt out if they'd allowed all the, a lot more tracks through the forest or done more burning off. Um, this is a ridiculous idea. It, was, it came out as a sort of a, a vicious tirade in the, a few days after the, the Black Saturday fires. Captured the media around Australia for about two weeks and then fizzled out because it actually had no basis in fact. But it's, it's a strongly held uh, uh, view to some, by some. But on the other hand, we need to discard failed landscape management ideologies, i.e. nature must be left alone. As though our natural environments were some terra nullius that were 
unmanaged, when in fact our indigenous landscapes were amongst the oldest cultural landscapes in the world. The idea that our natural environments will return to some pristine benign state just left untouched is ridiculous. There is no evidence to show that this will be the case. So we need to get real about that. And to solve this greeny redneck divide in our own communities with the practical solutions that bring together the best from both sides. Because of course there's some truth in both sides uh, of, of this divide. And avoid the wedge politics that happens from central government that says, well, the local community is divided, uh, we come in with our, our sensible uh, balanced approaches which of course end up pitting different groups in the community against each other. Okay, and I just want to end with that celebration of uh, our stories of resilience. And actually, uh, my colleague Daryl Taylor, who I have uh, just completed a two-day workshop with, is um, in the back of the room. And there he is uh, taking us through King Lake uh, in the aftermath of the fires um, and we stayed uh, with Dave at his modest home where he and his 10 year old son uh, defended the house uh, and maintained uh, uh, an oasis um, in an otherwise burnt landscape along with other people in that street who'd been part of a, a community fire guard group uh, which was one of the examples of the success of these programs that I think is, I think I would like to acknowledge some of the foresight of the CFA in Victoria in initiating these programs to encourage people at the household level uh, to take responsibility. And um, just put up some of the resources uh, that are available here or uh, from our website and thank you for um, indulging me in longer than I said I'd speak for. Thank you.